So let us now talk about standard 4, duties to employers. Standard 4A is loyalty. On matters related to employment, act for benefit of employer and do not deprive employer of the advantage of your skills and abilities. Do not divulge confidential information or otherwise cause harm to employer. Now as we discuss this standard, we will assume that you are the candidate who needs to comply with this. In terms of guidance on the standard, let's first talk about independent practice. Basically, do, the first point here is that you should not take on any practice that would basically compete with your employer. Now, if you are taking on some other work, then it is extremely important to engage in... Uh, so the first point is not to take on anything where you would compete with your employer. If you are planning to take on some other independent practice that does not compete with your employer, you must still notify your employer and this notification should be done in writing. And do not proceed until you have consent. So just because you have notified the employer, you cannot then go and engage in some other activity until the client has formally consented again in writing. In terms of leaving your employer, if you seek new employment, then you must act in the best interest of your employer till you have officially left. So act in best interest of employer until you have left or until your resignation is effective. You must not take any records, be they hard copies or soft copies. So any data that you gathered even on your personal laptop while you were working at your past employer must be destroyed. Simple knowledge of names of potential clients or existing clients so that is okay and any knowledge that you have gained in general or skills that you have developed while you were at your past employer using those is also okay whistleblowing for people outside the US this term might uh, be a little uh, as in you might not have heard of this so let me just describe the term whistleblowing first this is where an employee suspects that something is going wrong or sees some illegal or incorrect activity happening at their firm and they sort of go public with it. So they might you know, inform the law enforcement authorities or, or the press or someone outside the company is informed of, uh, informed of incorrect things happening at the company. So is this all right or not? According to standard 4A, whistleblowing is permitted only, only okay if the client is, uh, if, if it helps your client or if it helps the integrity of capital markets. So this highlights another point, a, a larger point in the entire code and standards about the, about the picking order of what's important. And you will notice that in general, the most important thing is uh, when, it, when we are talking about ethics is the integrity of capital markets. Then comes your duty towards your clients. And then comes the duty towards your employer. And then finally, yourself. So back to whistleblowing, it's okay if it is protecting the integrity of capital markets or it is okay if it is protecting your clients. However, if you are just doing it for personal gain, then whistleblowing is not all right according to standard 4A. In terms of nature of employment, 
in the investment management industry there are several types of employment you might be a full time employee or you might be a contractor so understanding the nature of employment is very important understanding the roles and responsibilities expectations from you as well as your expectations from your employer all these should be clearly documented you must honor any written and and oral commitments especially important here is oral commitments written honoring written commitments is obvious but an important part of 4a is that you must also honor and respect oral commitments that you might have made with your employer this comes this becomes important especially when you might have a contractor oriented relationship now let's talk about some procedures in the context of 4a from a employer perspective there should be a clear competition policy which states what employees what sort of work employees can and cannot do outside their regular responsibility and from your perspective as a employee you must understand the competition policy of your employer and then obviously you should comply with the competition policy similarly your employer ideally should have a well defined termination policy explaining if you if if an employee resigns exactly what is the procedure and so on and your job as an employee is to understand the termination policy and when you decide to leave the company or terminate your role there then you need to follow that policy incident reporting procedures so there should be ideally your company should have procedures or have incident reporting procedures basically these procedures will indicate that if an employee sees something happening that is not right how should he report this and again your job as an employee is to understand those procedures and follow them and as was just discussed employee classification ideally the employer should clearly specify what are the different types of employees that he has and you need to understand exactly where you fall and fulfill roles and responsibilities as well as expectations based on your particular employee classification finally application of standard 4a and this is absolutely critical i would strongly advise you to to read these examples in from the curriculum so for standard 4a this starts with page 94 and you should read all the examples because they form the basis of the questions that you will get on the exam so i'll just give you a sense for the types of questions or the types of scenarios that you might face one is soliciting former clients so let's say that you are currently working at abc company but you are not very happy and you are planning to leave abc and join xyz brokerage firm but before you leave given that you are so unhappy over here you are still still officially employed by abc and you start soliciting former clients and start telling them that you will move to xyz and you encourage them to move their money and their business to xyz that is clearly a violation of 4a because you are doing this while you are still at abc okay once you have moved to xyz and are officially over here then you can reach out to clients as long as you as long as you are not using any uh, client lists or other sort of data from your former employer so that brings us to this point here using the former employer's documents and files so taking over any client lists or taking over software that you used over there or any other information that was obtained at your former employer cannot be taken to the new employer similarly if you let's say you performed some project or did some work at abc which was done 100% by you but this work was done while you were on the payroll of abc 
that work belongs to ABC company and you cannot take it to a new company and simply use it there claiming that the work was done by you. So those are just some gen general applications and again I would strongly encourage you to read the examples from the curriculum. Let us now talk about standard 4B duties to employers and uh, standard B being additional compensation arrangements. Do not accept gifts, benefits, compensation, consideration that competes with or creates a conflict of interest with employer's interest unless written consent is obtained from all parties involved. So now let's talk about guidance here. What exactly does additional compensation mean? So additional compensation, so additional compensation, this would be as clarified here, any gifts or benefits that could come from your clients. So if your client tells you that if you give a return of more than 20 percent, he is going to, he's going to fly you to a nice vacation spot. So that's an example of additional compensation or even from third party. So if you are an asset management, uh, working at an asset management company and the brokerage firm that you deal with, they, they compensate you in some form, send you a large gift. So that would also fall under additional compensation arrangements. So the point here is that if anybody offers you an additional compensation, that in of itself is not wrong, but you must get written consent from all parties, which obviously includes your uh, employer. So must get written consent before you can accept any additional compensation. And in this day and age, email is accepted as uh, a form of written communication. It's also important that any time a client or a third party offers a gift to you or suggests that they would make a gift based on certain performance or certain metrics, you must create a report on this and submit it to your employer. And in this report, you must include the, the nature of the compensation, the, the amount of the compensation and the duration of the agreement. So, so you disclose this information, it can be via an email and as mentioned earlier, once you get the written consent, then it is okay to receive that compensation. So now let's just look at some application here again. You must read the, the examples in the curriculum and these uh, are on page page 100. So to give you a general idea, let's talk about notification of client bonus compensation. So let's say that you are managing the, the uh, managing the funds for a very wealthy client and the client says that if you over the year give him a return of more than 20 percent you know he will fly you to London on an all expense paid vacation and you accept this but do not inform your employer so this would clearly be a violation of standard 4b or take another example, let's say that you write a report on the cement industry and the CEO of Lucky Cement really likes your report and he, he tells you that he is going to, he, he calls you over for a meeting and suggests that he takes you in his corporate jet for a visit to all the all the cement installations in the country and if you accept this without getting permission of your employer then that would also be a violation of 4b because potentially you have uh, taken on or you as in potentially you are being treated extremely well by the ceo and even though you are not explicitly getting any money but in terms of the money that is being spent on you with travel and staying in five-star hotels, that, is, uh, that might create potential conflicts of interest. 
hence uh, ideally when you are offered expensive travel arrangements or offered to stay in expensive hotels that should be turned down and at the very least though you must get written permission from your employer before you take on such a trip examples are much better explained or much better presented in the curriculum so again you must go through them and finally standard 3c responsibilities of supervisors so supervisors if you are in a supervisory role you must make reasonable efforts to detect and prevent violations of applicable laws rules regulations and code and standards by anyone subject to your supervision or authority now the key here is that just because so so you are in a supervisory role and several people are working for you now the actions of these people who are working for you 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 need to ensure that processes and procedures are in place that if people are doing things that are not correct people are doing things that are violation of the code and standards you need to have procedures and policies in place to detect what's wrong and correct what's wrong so that doesn't mean that you have to know exactly what's going on but you need to have reasonable procedures in place reasonable so if someone despite reasonable procedures and regulations in place if someone still does something wrong then then that doesn't necessarily mean a violation of 4c but if you find out that somebody is doing something wrong then obviously corrective action needs to take place now what does what are some uh, important points related to uh, compliance procedures so they must be clear people must be able to understand the compliance procedures you should if you are in a senior enough role you should designate a compliance officer whose job it is to make sure that people comply with uh, with the code and standards you must have checks and balances in place so so if somebody is given complete autonomy to do what he wants and there aren't any checks and balances that creates an incentive for this person to potentially do something that is not correct you must have a procedure that uh, a procedure to deal with to deal with violations so ideally violations should not happen but if they do happen despite all the processes and procedures and checks and balances so if something does happen you need to have a procedure for dealing with violations and all your employees should understand what those procedures are now speaking of procedures some some general points here the defined procedures must be distribute must be distributed to all the employees the procedures should be kept updated the staff needs to be educated about these uh, uh, educated about these procedures and you need to have a system in place where you re review employee actions and if somebody does something wrong or violates the the code and standards then promptly initiate so need to be prompt in terms of initiating any corrective action so in in this case where you are initiating corrective action you must conduct a a thorough investigation and do not until the investigation is complete you should not uh, as in generally some cfa questions might suggest that you you feel an employee has done something wrong and one of the answer options might be that you fire the individual that would not be the right action basically you do a thorough investigation and during the investigation you can put limits on what the employee does but it would not be appropriate to fire him so you can operate within limits or within extra surveillance or extra uh, extra supervisory oversight but uh, wait till the thorough investigation is complete and then take action based on the results of the investigation in terms of application again make sure you read the examples in the curriculum but uh, some high level points 
supervising research activities. So this, this is suggesting that if you are supervising a group of research analysts and let's say that the research analysts are making, let's say a research analyst changed a recommendation from a buy to sell and before this information is disseminated to the public he he decides to sell his own shares as well as the shares of his discretionary clients now that would clearly be and let's say that all this is happening within your group and it goes undetected and you have no procedures to catch violations such as this then you as a supervisor are violating standard 4c or in terms of trading activities if if people if you are in charge of a trading desk and people in your department are maybe you know trading based on um, on insider information or doing something else that violates the standard and you don't have any procedures or checks and balances to track such incorrect activities that also would be a violation of 4c